Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Forgotten Games. My name is Fringlish and I'm here today to ask and answer one simple question. What is a Dragon Eclipse? Now this game has only recently come into early access on Steam. Uh, we'll get into a bit why that's a good thing later on, at least for this game. Now, Dragon Eclipse is a game very much in the same vein as Slay the Spire, with a little bit of Darkest Dungeon thrown in. However, the main draw of it is it actually changes the mechanics about somewhat, means it doesn't feel like a copy-paste clone, like quite a few games are, this feels like it could stand on its own, and with a bit more development, it probably will. So let's jump into the game, let's have a look round, and let's explain a bit about how it works. So welcome to Dragon Eclipse. Uh, right now I'm controlling, uh, I don't know, a, a character, and we uh, are in our home base of sorts. We have different people to speak to who can uh, give us little buffs or assistances. Here the village chef will give us an item to help the start. Always make sure to speak to her. And the Iceling and the different uh, Golomo. These people are all mistlings who we have recruited from our mistling quarters. Uh, each one of these has different effects, and we'll use those to make our team, uh, which we will then delve into the wilderling, wilderness. Uh, so we can uh, walk about, speak to those, the ones we've currently unlocked. Uh, we have the Mistling Trainer, who I think that's going to be for something in the future. Maybe you can develop your team a bit more. I'm looking forward to that. Right now it doesn't really do much. But we walk about the, the map, uh, either by clicking or using the arrow keys, and it gives us more ideas. Uh, we've got the hatchery where we can unlock more to the right and to the left we have uh, our cards compodium. So uh, just a sort of interactive menu with a little bit of walking about, some some sort of extra, I should say extra flair, extra je ne sais quoi to it. Um, and then we also have our blessing compodium. Again, more on that when we actually get into the fight. A bit more interactive than a normal menu, but that's what it is. This is just our menu, when we can check things. So, what is Dragon Eclipse? Well, you create a team of three different mistlings to help you battle and basically stop the apocalypse or the, the big bad that is coming through. So, let's begin a journey and have a look. So, right now I've got two heroes un unlocked. I have Arcana Default, uh, who, whose effect is first card bought on the reward screen after each battle is free. Or I could have Maya Bloomberry, so I can begin with 20 Mistberries. I'm going to go with the first one, as this does let you front load your party a bit more, but this is the default character everybody's going to start with, and having free cards each time is very nice. We're also going to go on lowest difficulty, so we have 12 days to complete. Uh, we can go to uh, medium, so we have less days, less gold, uh, more enemy health and damage, but we gain more experience, and the very hard is just even more, even even less stuff, even more stuff for the enemies, but more and more XP. I'm in no rush, I'm actually enjoying this, so I'm going to continue. And now we create our team out of all the mistlings we have unlocked. So each mistling has an activation and a talent. Now the talent is something that can affect the mistling based on certain characteristics, and the activation is an effect you can activate, as weird as it sounds, the mistling with. In the Pine Queeks uh, state, if you activate it, it just attacks a random enemy with 50% of its power. Its power currently is 2 on the sword, and its health is 20. Those are its base stats. And its talent is when it gets attacked, when it's hurt, it adds a Blind Anger card to your hand. What is Blind Anger card? It's the card you get with the Mistling. For in this case, it would exhaust, and I attack a random enemy with 50% of the power. So if I can get his power up, he can be very strong and do an awful lot of damage. Each Mistling is going to have a different activation and different talent. It also has different starting power and different health. And each Mistling will also come with a different card to add in to our composition. So my standard composition right now is Galrexus. I have a 30 health, strong boy. His activation adds shields. It's a little heal card, exhaust, which means it thins your deck. That's not bad. And the talent is he only loses four shields instead of all of them. So I like to run him as a front line. So let's pop him in. Then for a buff, I quite like Prowler. Rather weak overall. Um, however, the activation draws cards, so it's helpful to get that card draw going on. 
and at the start of battle I gain one extra Miss Berry for every five Miss Berries. Prowler, however, can't be evolved to a stronger character. More on that in a bit later. But the extra Miss Berry generation would be very strong. And then for my third character, I can choose one of these other three. So I'm going to look for one which is a bit more... which helps combo quite well. So I can go Golomo, which applies vulnerable to the front enemy if he gets activated. Good for dealing more damage, obviously, with, uh, whoops, uh, with Galrexus. Or I could do, say, activation at strength to the front, which, again, adds more strength, can be quite strong. Uh, or I could go for attacking. Now, if I'm having a front row as Galrexus I'm looking to defend, I probably won't want the attacking. I'm going to go with Golomo. Um, he also can revive once per battle for free. Uh, so it makes it a lot... Uh, it means he can stay alive for a bit longer. And the vulnerable will be strong. So now I'm basically into the woods. I need to walk about and do some fights. The fights are represented on this map by these small circles. Uh, each fight is going to take a day. And their difficulty is depending on the amount of circles. So I'm going to quickly go into this fight. We'll have a look at the mechanics. This is currently an easy battle, so I'll gain 5 to 6 Miss Berries and 10 to 20 gold from it. So at the top we can see the effects. Uh, these two characters are currently going to attack the person in front, in this case Galrexus. And this one at the back is doing nothing. Uh, each character can also have effects currently on them. So this one, the revive ability, which we know he had. So the ability of the lesser Shadowling is lifesteal. So he will heal if he does damage. And he has permanent lifesteal. So that's the, uh, that's the ability, and that's what's causing it. So now we have the basic energy, everything very similar from Soul of the Spire, and the food we got is permanently increased missing max health by 10. So this is a permanent increase. I'm going to use this food straight away to basically make my Prowler a bit stronger. I don't want him to die. So I'm going to get attacked for four on my front. So first thing I'm going to do is probably put a couple of shields down, and this, this will be enough for me to protect against both attacks. If I spent some more shields, yes, he'd only lose four, uh, but I wouldn't be able to attack, and I, I do need to get through these enemies. Now, unlike Slay the Spire, where you choose the enemy to attack, here, you, when you choose attack, you have to choose who you want to attack. Right now, my Golomo has the most points, so I'm going to use it to attack. And he does three damage to the front enemy. Unless your Mistling has an ability, they will always attack the front. So positioning is key. You can, however, change the positioning at any time. So that is useful to learn in combat. Now we're going to hit end turn, and what happens on the end turn? All the mistlings will basically um, either use the abilities if they have some, and the person in your, the front of your party, in this case Galrexus, will do his attack. So we're going to end the turn. They get to go, so they always go first, and then everybody gets activated, and the attack happens. So he's only down to two. He should be dead quite soon. Uh, you can see that currently they're going to gain Wrath, which is uh, a boost, and this Lesser Shadowling is going to attack for two, but he's going to attack the last person in the party. So again, I want some defense either on Galrexus or I want it on someone else. First things first, uh, I can attack and wound, which I probably don't want to do. I never like using the wounds because there's not that much heal in the decks, at least for now. Um, I have an awful lot of cards in hand, so I'm going to deal damage to the second small necro worm, bring him basically within lethal range. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm probably just going to take the hit because it's two, because that allows me to attack here, killing this one, and my automatic attack at the end of the turn will kill this small necro worm. So for the price of two damage, I've now killed two enemies. Right now, I'm going to he's going to deal five am uh, damage to self, but he's going to apply vulnerable. So I don't really need to deal with shields right now. I can do even more attack. Uh, I'm going to use this to heal because it's an exhaust card. It means when I play it once per turn, it's going to go. So there we go. We just finish, sort of finished our turn, and he's down to now only two hit points. So there is our combat done. Lovely. So we gain mist berries. We gain gold. And at the end of combat, we basically get a shop where we can spend Miss Berries for uh, any of these blessings, uh, which we need to decide to assign to a different character. Each blessing a character has, uh, each blessing a Missling has, will increase the cost of the blessing. 
So you can make someone really powerful, but it become more and more expensive. However, if you add four blessings onto a character, they will evolve and their abilities will become stronger. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as we saw before, this Mistling cannot evolve, so you don't need, really need to add blessings to them. As for the cards, because I took the Arcana default, I get to choose a card for free. Uh, this one will be free. Uh, Cannonade I quite like because grow means each time it's played it increases the value. So this is the same as an attack card right now. Once I played it once it becomes twice as good. And then it will be three times as good and four times and so on and so forth. And the earlier I get this, uh, well it's only per combat, but it can become very useful. As you can see now each further card costs Mist Berries. So I've gained one more for ending and now we explore a bit more. Now, what makes this game a little bit different is because you have the ability to walk around the map and sort of discover things. Here is the final boss element, which we'll be teleported to, but we can decide where we want to go. So I see a treasure chest up here. I know, for example, I'm going to do a regular battle, regular, and maybe a double or a normal battle to get to this chest. So I can choose to spend three days to get some more treasure. Here I have a hut I can interact with or a care center, which can be used to either enhance for 100 gold, so increase the power by one, or heal. So I have access to healing now for gold, which is nice, or I can maybe sort of head up and try and discover up there looks like a card forge to develop my cards. But as you can see, I need to do a three strong fight or an elite battle in order to get there. Now the rewards are higher, but I probably don't have enough. So I can push forward. Oh, as I can see here, a chest for only two days worth. So a regular battle and then probably a hard battle. Or I can continue more even exploring. So I'm not locked into a linear path. I can go and attack a couple of these easy ones, then when I have better cards, I can go and do an elite fight to get the better rewards. Or it looks like I can come in from the north. Now I have had an instance where the bug has allowed me to sort of just walk past these games. As you can see, this elite fight is not going to go well for me. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to skip forward towards basically the boss fight, uh, or a boss fight in a run, so you can see more what like end game combat looks like. And then we can talk a bit more about the game itself. So now that I've explained a little bit about how the game actually works, I skipped ahead to uh, basically what's a boss fight. Uh, so the same things will apply, um, the same elements, just a bit more diverse. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead just to show off some cool shit and then we'll be finished um, with a, just an overview and a recap of, of the game and what I what I think is going to happen with it and what I hope to see happen with it and how good it actually is. So here we're a little bit in. As you can see I've got Overkill which is fairly underrated. Moving on. Now obviously half a million defense isn't enough. Um, so why don't we just double it once again? Nearly a million defensive points. Uh, yeah, no, that should just about do it. I think I've pr pretty much won this one. So after that we get our XP screen where, as you can see, we've just unlocked a new character. Um, as long as we do uh, specific uh, events such as activate, say, Mistlings 100 times, we can unlock the egg and then have a brand new character to play with, a brand new Mistling. We've also unlocked a new um, here, a new relic, or a new bonus, which we can then buy and add its effect to our characters. Now, overall, I'm really enjoying this game, but there is a problem overall. Uh, now, it's not with the development of the game itself. The fact that you have to do events, such as activate here, a hundred times to gain a new character, the progression, the, the sort of mini-quests, that's great. I like the new mechanics. However, as you can see, the Mistling Quarters here, we only have 10 possible characters to choose from. That seems quite limited. Like, the combinations, once I find a good one, I found a good one now. Just max out the defense and play. It seems like if I'm not doing that, I'm losing out. So the run is a little bit limited, or at least that's what it feels like. There is definitely room for growth, and I really wish there's more. The different damage types as well, it seems to be there's only physical damage, there's no such things as uh, curse damage or magic damage or, or elemental things that could easily be applied to the different mistlings. It just feels like the game has been... it's given you the skeleton and it's missing the rest of it. Like, you, you buy the game, it's okay, it's good actually for what it is, it's got new mechanics, it's implemented well. Okay, so there's a couple of bugs, but it's nice, it's fun. 
and it's not a copy paste of anything else it just needs a lot more work some of the there are some glitches as you walk about the ui sometimes is not very intuitive and i'm just going to take another cut away so you can see what looks like obs so this is the graphics when you're dealing with the boss or when you start a new campaign i saw this the first time and honestly wondered if i was currently streaming and something had popped up now i understand why small developers they use ready-made assets and they can work towards it it just seems like this game has so much character and potential that it is a shame when things are reused it is a shame when you can blatantly see that's copied now i don't know how many hours they'd have to do to fix that to create their own custom graphics it is a workaround it is a fairly decent workaround it is a small studio at the end of the day it's just it feels like it's letting the game down because it is so good or it has such a good base that it can be much better than it currently is now this is why i think the game is good in early access early access lets people get a taste for the game right now i'm never normally a fan of it but it's workable it's not an early access where it's a money grab and things aren't working well it's not that expensive it does deliver it's okay for the money you're spending uh, but we don't need to worry too much about them continuing to develop because it's okay on its own but it can be great and I'm looking forward very much to how this game is going to develop if they're going to add different damage types if they're going to add more mistlings if they're going to add different combinations or or different ways to affect the game and I'm going to continue until I've probably unlocked everything that's that's how good it is or well, it's worthwhile Anyway, I've been for English. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day, and I hope to see you next time. If you want more of our content, there are a couple of links all ready to click on the side of the screen. So, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Until the next time, goodbye.